Today's stock analysis is going over Thermo Fisher Scientific, ticker symbol TMO. This is a $200 billion market cap company that is really changing the world. Their mission is enabling their customers to make the world healthier, cleaner, and safer. The stock is down about 5% over the past year. So let's take a look at this company and the stock to figure out if it's a good buy right now. So this stock analysis video is divided up into four different parts. The first part is the business overview. What does this company do? Do they have any competitive advantages? Second, financial overview. We're gonna be taking a look at a 10 year financial history on Thermo Fisher. Look at different sales, earnings, revenue, return on invested capital, all these different metrics to see how well they performed over the last 10 years. Third, we're doing a stock valuation, looking at four different valuation methods that look at different items, including free cash flow, earnings, and owner's earnings. And last but not least is return on investment. So what I would expect to get buying into the stock price day or even in the future, what would my returns be? So let's go ahead and jump into the business overview now. So Thermo Fisher Scientific is a huge company. They have over 125,000 employees. They invest about $1.5 billion in R&D, and they are doing roughly $45 billion in revenue over the past year. They have a lot of well-known brands, including Thermo Scientific, Applied Biosystems, Fisher Scientific, and more. The companies divide into four different business segments. So first, they have their Life Sciences Solutions, which does about $12 billion a year in revenue. Secondly, they have Analytical Instruments, which is about $7 billion of the revenue. Third is Specialty Diagnostics, which is about $4.5 billion in revenue. And their largest segment is their laboratory products and biopharma services, coming in around $23 billion. Their revenue is spread over different markets, including 59% in pharma and biotech, 14% in academic and government, 14% in diagnostics and healthcare, and 13% in industrial and applied. The majority of their products are services and consumables, which is about 82% of their total revenue. The other 18% is made up of instruments. They are a global company that does about 55% of their revenue in North America, 24% in Europe, 18% in Asia Pacific, and 3% everywhere else. The company has had incredible growth over the last several years, and we'll dig in more in the financial history of this video, but I do wanna point out, you can see here that their Kager growth, according to their investor presentation over the last 10 years, has about 14% on the revenue side, 17% on adjusted EPS, 15% on free cash flow. So this company has grown tremendously, even at a $200 billion market cap, they have seen significant growth over the last 10 years. A big chunk of the company's growth has not come from its organic growth internally. It's from M&A, so mergers and acquisitions. This company has grown to be a $200 billion behemoth in their industry by buying other companies. And that continues to be one of their strategies moving forward. In fact, about 60 to 75% of their capital they expect to put into mergers and acquisitions going into the future, and the other 25 to 40% will be return of capital to shareholders. So one of the biggest primary focuses of the business is to continue to push towards more M&A in the future. So here are some of the long-term financial goals for the company. They want to hit a 7 to 9% core organic revenue growth from about 4 to 6% market growth. They also want to see organic margin expansion by about 40 to 50 basis points. They also want to deploy substantial capital deployment. So that should all earn mid-teens adjusted EPS growth. At least that's what the company wants to get long term. So next, let's talk about their financial history. And we're going to do a 10-year review on Thermo Fisher. So we're going to be looking at the big five, which is sales per share growth, earnings per share growth, free cash flow per share growth, book value per share growth, and return on invested capital. We're looking at a 10% or more Kager growth per year and a 10% on average return on invested capital 
for this company, really any company that we're looking into. Now, I use a per share approach because it factors in any share issuances and share buybacks of the company. So you see the big five numbers on your screen right now over the last 10 years. So this company, Thermo Fisher, had about $45 billion enterprise value back in 2013. They've grown it to about $240 billion here today, so very impressive. Now, as far as sales per share growth, we've seen about 13% CAGR growth on the revenue side per share of the last 10 years, which is really impressive. EPS, 17%, free cash flow per share at 14%. Book value per share at 11%, and return on invested capital has averaged about 7% over the last 10 years. So it is good to see the sales, earnings, free cash flow, and book value all growing at double digits. However, over the last three years, we've seen a dip. So for example, earnings per share and free cash flow per share has been negative CAGR over the last three years. It's one of the reasons why we have seen the stock really stall and have a negative 5% mark over the last year. And it's also a little bit disappointing to see the return on vested capital at 7% on average over the last 10 years, because with this type of growth, I would expect it that the return on investment would have been in the mid-teens based on the other numbers that we see. Next, let's take a look at their balance sheet, see how their debt situation is, and also their working capital. So as far as long-term debt goes, it would take them roughly 4.7 years to pay off their total long-term debt based on their operating earnings, which is slightly concerning. I like to see that under three years. However, their debt to equity is under 100% at 78% to be exact. So that looks pretty good. So I'm not concerned about their debt situation at all. Their current ratio is coming in at 1.6. So they have plenty of current assets to cover their current liabilities. So their working capital looks just fine. So overall, their balance sheet looks to be pretty solid. Next, let's take a look at the market multiple, what the market has been willing to pay for the company over the last 10 years, and also some of their margin. So over the last 10 years, the market has been willing to pay a 33 multiple. So this is a the PE. So that is pretty high. Right now, it's at 36. So even though that's been pretty consistent, around 33 to 34 for most years, I would say this is pretty high because the company has been doing really well. We saw those revenue and earnings numbers on a CAGR basis. So the market has been willing to pay more for this company because of the growth that they've been able to do and then also forecasting in the future. Now, as far as margins go, a little concern here. They increased it from 42 to 50% in 2021. Now, some concerning things I see here is their gross margin did climb from 42% to 50% from 2013 to 2020, but then started falling off from there and down to 40% over the trailing 12 months. Their operating margins have also gone down from 26% in 2021 down to 17% here today. However, that 17% has been their average operating margin over the last 10 years. So on your screen here, you can see all the numbers in one place. Now, overall, I think on the surface, Thermo Fisher looks really impressive. They've had some really great numbers, really great growth. Their balance sheet looks really good. On the downside, the market has paid a very high premium for this company. So they see any slowdown on growth you're gonna see a big fall in the stock price. And we've seen earnings and free cash flow specifically take a drop over the last three years. Nonetheless, on the surface, this company looks very impressive. Next, let's calculate an intrinsic value for Thermo Fisher. And we're gonna be using four different models to do so that look at different things. So the first one is my margin of safety calculator. That's specifically looking at earnings per share, projecting it out over the next five years. The second one is my discounted operating earnings model. So basically, I'm trying to calculate what operating earnings is going to be over the next several years and then discount it back today to get net present value future earnings. The third is the 10 cap. So trying to calculate owner's earnings of the business and being able to pay 10 times 
that amount. And the fourth and final one is the payback time method. This one looks at free cash flow projecting out free cash flow over the next 10 years. The first method is my margin of safety calculator. So I'm trying to project what growth is going to be on an earnings per share basis over the next five years. So I think an average or a standard EPS for the company right now is around a $15 for EPS. Now, I think their growth from an earnings per share standpoint should be around 17% per year. I think the rate is going to be around a three, which gives me a growth multiplier about 2.19 and also an EPS multiplier of 34.20. That gives me a target buy price of $387. And today the stock price trades at 550. So it does not look like it's a buy according to this model, but that's not surprising because of their market multiple is so high. So this model tends to not do really well from a target buy price when a company is trading at a high multiple. The next model I like to use is my discounted operating earnings model. Sales is going to be forecasting it out over the next several years. Also calculating what I think the operating margins are going to be for the company over that same time frame so I can get to an operating earnings number over the next several years. From there, I'm able to get a net present value of all future operating earnings. I discount it back to today. And then using what I think the market multiple is going to be for the company, I can come with an int intrinsic share price for this stock. So long story short, I believe sales is going to grow from 43 billion up to 60 billion over the next several years. That is a 7% CAGR growth on the top line. I think operating margins are going to stabilize around 21% which is pretty close to what a lot of analysts think it's going to do as well. Three out of the four of their business segments are already pushing more than 25% adjusted operating margins. So I think this is pretty in line with where they're gonna be. So that gives me a 9% operating earnings growth for the business. I think the market is willing to pay a 33 multiple, which is on average where they've been over the last several years, which gives me intrinsic share price about $535 here today based on these assumptions and this model. The next model we're gonna be taking a look at is the 10 cap valuation. So this one is looking at owner's earnings of the business and then willing to pay 10 times that based on the total stock outstanding at the time. So I think an average free cash flow for the business is around $7 billion. Their tax provision is around $750 million. And their total shares outstanding are $386 million, which gives me an owner's earnings per share of around 20. If I take that number, multiply it by 10, uh, based on rounding, I come with a 10 cap valuation of $198. So that would be my buy price based on this model, which is well below the stock price. But again, because the multiple is so high, it's not too surprising that is not showing a buy based on this model. The last model I want to take a look at is the payback time method. This one specifically looks at free cash flow of the business projects it out over the next 10 years. And basically we want to get our money back in eight years or less. Now, I think their free cash flow is going to grow around 12% per year. So I come with a payback time value of 13, which is well above my eight. So it does not look like it's a buy according to this model. Now let's look at a summary of all the different models that we just ran to see what they tell us. So the discounted operating earnings model says the fair value of the stock is around $535 here today. Give a buy price of a 30% margin of safety, which would be $375. Payback time buy price would be $250. 10 cap, $198. Margin of safety calculator, $388. So all these valuation models at this time assume that is not a buy based on the assumptions that we talked about earlier. However, my discount operating earnings model does suggest that it is trading near fair value here today. Now let's take a look at what I think the return on investment would be for the stock based on today's stock price and potential future stock prices. So today the stock is trading at $550. So I would assume around a 9% return on the stock per year over the next several years. Now, if you're watching this video in the future and the stock drops down to $432, I would assume around a 15% return on investment for this stock. 
Now, this is based on a sales CAGR of 7%, an EBIT CAGR of 9%, and a market multiple of 33. Now, the company does pay a very, very small dividend, around 0.2%, so it really doesn't move the needle all that much. So overall, based on my forecasts and assumptions, it doesn't look like there's much margin of safety in the stock price right now, but Thermo Fisher is a fantastic company. So that was my Thermo Fisher stock analysis. Now, if you would like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon where you can access my different valuation models I've gone over in this video. You also get access to my Discord channel with over 100 other value investors, and you get access to my Patreon posts. So if you would like access to those or want to support the channel, I'll put a link down below. Now, I would love to hear from you guys about Thermo Fisher. Is this a stock you currently own or maybe it's been on your watch list? Why do you like it or not like it at this time? Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you guys on the other side. Take care and God bless.